Never, never be afraid to do what's right, especially if the well-being of a person or animal is at stake. Society's punishments are small compared to the wounds we inflict on our soul when we look the other way. Focusing on the subject of domestic animals in the U.S., whether they are someone's loved family pet or a stray with no home, the anti-cruelty laws now exist in all U.S. states and territories. Animal rights are not included in the United States Constitution, following the states, counties, and cities to form and enforce animal protection. All of the laws treat animals under the title of property, making the protection of their safety and lives less than that of humans. Throughout the 1930s and 40s, the Tacoma Humane Society began rescuing animals, found homes for strays, as well as kept an eye on the treatment of local livestock. In 1954, the National Humane Society was founded. It is now known as the Humane Society of the United States. Today, it has 17 nations in its international affiliate, with 11 million Americans among this country's members and supporters. animal cruelty such as puppy mills, dog fighting, neglect, starvation, and murder of innocent animals has continued to exist. In the state of Washington, the local news is almost constantly reporting on these horrendous stories, most of which come too late to save their victims' lives. Warning, what you are about to hear and read contains graphic descriptions and disturbing language about the condition of an animal that experienced severe abuse and neglect. On April 21st, 2015, Thurston County Deputy Prosecuting Attorney Olivia Zhu filed animal cruelty charges against two Bucota, Washington men who allegedly abused and killed an old dog named Wolfie. Robert Leatherman, 51 at the time and Wolfie's owner, was charged with first-degree animal cruelty for allegedly starving, dehydrating, or suffocating an animal and causing substantial and unjustifiable physical pain that extended for a period sufficient to cause considerable suffering. The other party involved in Wolfie's death, Jeffrey Gavin, 44 years old at the time, and also the man accused of shooting and killing Wolfie was charged with second-degree animal cruelty for knowingly, recklessly, or with criminal negligence inflicting unnecessary suffering or pain upon an animal. Both men were ordered to appear in Thurston County Superior Court on Tuesday, May 5th at 10 a.m. Leatherman admitted he asked Gavin to take Wolfie and put him down. He also admitted that Wolfie was in horrible condition and that friends had told him that Wolfie needed to be put to sleep. However, he didn't care about the animal's horrible condition until someone complained to Animal Control about it. He still didn't care enough about him to have Wolfie humanely euthanized and instead had Gavin shoot the dog in the back of the head three times and dumped in a hole. Then a cropsy from the court's veterinarian found that the animal did not die instantly and instead likely suffered painfully in death. He also reported that in his professional opinion, this patient suffered tremendously from chronic severe skin, oral, joint, and ear disease as well as neglect and starvation in life. The case is still open after years of continuances and both parties have pled not guilty. On March 21st, 2016, a mountain biker found a three-year-old brown and white pit bull mix named Diamond hanging from a tree on Department of Natural Resources property near Olympia, Washington's Summit Lake. Her owner was looking for permanent housing that allowed dogs and had left the animal in the care of the suspect.
Diamond was an emotional support dog for the owner's eight-year-old son. According to a veterinary necropsy, the dog had been aggressively sexually assaulted before being hung, all while still alive. Diamond died of asphyxiation. The suspect is a convicted felon who is a relative of Diamond's owner. James Leroy Evans, 33, pled not guilty to charges of first-degree animal cruelty, a charge that could put him in prison for well over five years, as well as slapping him with a $20,000 fine. The case is still pending. Evans has admitted to killing Diamond because he said, the dog killed his iguana. Evans' trial date is on July 25, 2016 at Thurston County's Courthouse in Olympia, Washington. He has pled not guilty to one count of aggravated first-degree animal cruelty. On April 29, 2016, a young and beloved family cat named Baby J was viciously and senselessly tortured and killed by an 11-year-old girl, her mother Tina Miller, and her mother's boyfriend, Kyle Burke, in North Centralia, Washington's Virginia Station apartment complex. The feline was loved by most everyone living in the area. A childish spat between the 11-year-old and one of her friends over a shirt led to his death. The cat was handed up to the second floor balcony where the girl's mother sat who then slammed the poor animal to the ground floor, followed by the girl crushing the animal's skull with a large rock. This horrendous event was followed by the arrival of two laughing males, one of which was Burke, who allegedly ended the poor cat's life by stabbing it. Alicia Schroeder was one of the numerous witnesses to this nightmarish event. Note, however, since most of the witnesses were juveniles, the sight of this occurrence has emotionally traumatized and frightened them possibly forever. Police chief admits they messed up. Someone tortured and killed a cat in Centralia, but the police officer investigating the death made a mistake that may prevent anyone from facing charges. South Bureau Chief Drew Mickelson found out why the police chief says the same mistake won't happen again. My two-year-old named it Baby J. Baby J may have been two-year-old Mia Star's cat, but everyone, the Virginia Station Apartments, considered him a neighbor. It's friendly. It was never scared of any dog. It didn't harm nobody. But someone or some people harmed Baby J three weeks ago. This is blood right here that I forgot to grab. Alicia Schroeder has tried to clean up the mess, but she'll never be able to wipe away the memory. You guys don't understand how messed up this is right now. Schroeder says her neighbors tortured Baby J, first squeezing him. What they said is the cat was dropped from the balcony. Then she says someone hit Baby J with a rock right before killing him. Right here, when I noticed him from there, stabbed the cat. And I said, what the hell are you doing? And he had the cat halfway under the fence right there. Centralia police arrested Schroeder's 24-year-old neighbor on animal cruelty charges. But the prosecutor so they could not prove the cat was killed. Why? Baby J's body had not been preserved as evidence. We took a look at the report and it was, we made some mistakes in it, but started taking a look at policies and procedures and found out we didn't have any. And we went, oh, 
Carl Nielsen has been Centralia's chief for a year. He says he was surprised to learn his officers had no training on how to handle animal cruelty cases. As far as they were concerned, it was just like any other animal that had been killed by hit by a car or whatever else, just dispose of it as best we can. Um, but obviously, in a, in a criminal case, we've got to have procedures in place. Now we've got... We hope Jay gets justice. Posado's Safe Haven, a nonprofit animal advocacy organization, is now training Centralia officers and helping establish new department policies. An investigator is also helping on a duo of the Baby J case. It's great that Centralia is admitting that they made some mistakes and there's room for improvement. We absolutely commend them for that because that's how you make the system better. I'm hoping they don't get swept under the rug. Alicia Schroeder hopes the police can get the investigation right this time and hold Baby J's killer accountable. Uh, even myself, I've never seen something so broke in my life. Like, seriously. Three minutes. King five. While police did not take Baby J's body, neighbors did take it to a veterinarian who did a necropsy. How he died is not clear, but the necropsy could still help investigators hold someone accountable. Q13 Fox reporter David Rose reported from the necropsy reports that was prepared by Dr. Victoria Smith, who confirmed that Jay had, quote, a fractured skull, penetrating head wound into the brain, a neck fracture, and appeared to be strangled. The full report was submitted to Centrea Police Department on May 5th, 2016. On Saturday, May 21st, 2016, citizens enraged over the casual handling of evidence as well as the slow pace of gathering of witness statements by the Centralia Police Department formed a rally in front of Centralia Washington City Hall. The case is still open as of June 6, 2016, with no charges having been filed to date by Lewis County Prosecutor Jonathan Myers. If a person witnesses or suspects animal cruelty and or abuse, there are several ways to address the situation. In Lewis County, Washington, call the Sheriff's Department. Their number is 360-748-9286. If possible, cage and take the animal to the local shelter. Here at the Lewis County Animal Shelter in the month of May 2016, and there are little animals to be found. Me? Upon visiting the Lewis County Animal Shelter, 
all animals <laughs> seemed to be very well taken care of and healthy. Local strays turned into the shelter were held for 72 hours before being put up for adoption. Outside of Lewis County, Washington, call your local ASPCA and of course always support and contact your local Humane Society.